Well, good morning, Canyon Springs. Would you stand with me, please? The words are on the screen, so you don't have to hold the book, but you're welcome to grab one. 680, I heard we have them in the bulletin now, so. All the way my Savior leads me. All the songs today is talking about how the Lord is leading you. All the way my Savior leads me, what have I to ask beside? Can I doubt His tender mercy, who through life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divide and stronger, hear my faith in Him to dwell. For I know whatever before me, Jesus do it all. Gives a song in the night season 
and all the day long. Hey, what a blessing that uh, the singing has already been. We've got one more song to sing together as a church family and worship before we get there. But I want to recognize someone special. Miss Jean here is, uh, has a special day today. It's her birthday. Yeah, let's give her a hand, would ya? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jean. Happy birthday to you. Amen. Amen. We sure do love Miss Jean and what a blessing, you know. She's one of she's one of those uh Two ladies, two women in my life that could tell me what to do. Amen. <laughs> my wife and, of course, Miss Jean. But uh, uh, we appreciate her and her faithfulness to the Lord. Been a member of our church for 35 years. What a blessing that is. And what a great testimony of faithfulness. And Amen. we're so honored to have that. Did I get the number wrong? Well, not that number. <laughs> 35. Okay, I'm sorry. But there we go. We, you know, that's perfect example right there. Yes, Amen. Sir. But uh, we're so thank you, and we want you to know that uh, your faithfulness has been seen and accounted for, and we just want to honor you a little bit on your birthday, and thank you for all that you do and yes, all yeah. the blessings of life and the, uh, the, the friendliness and the faithfulness and uh, you know, all of those types of things, and we're very thankful for that. Well, let's continue our service. We're going to sing a little bit, The Way of the Cross Leads Home. Let's sing that out. Mike, you come and lead that song. I must needs go home by the way of the cross. shall ne'er get sight of the gates of life if the way of the cross I miss. The way of the cross leads home. The way of the cross leads home. It is sweet to know as I onward go. The way of the cross leads home. Needs go on in the blood sprinkled way, the path that the Savior trod. If I ever climb to the heights of blood, where the soul is at home with God, the way of the cross leads home. The way of the cross leads home. It is sweet to know as I. Maybe seated. All right, what a blessing. Thank you for your gifting us with your singing and all of those things. It's a blessing. Thank you, musicians. Thank you, Mike and Mary. In fact, tonight at five o'clock, uh, we're going to start our choir ensemble practice tonight at five. You say, Who is invited? Anyone that wants to. Uh, can come and participate and, and sing and give their voice to the Lord in song. They're going to be practicing some hymns, some well-known hymns and those types of things. And uh, we'll just see how it goes. Uh, and we want to encourage you to be a part of that. Listen, 
if uh, you're one of those that says, well, I think I'd like to, uh, but you're not the kind of person that you know, wants to commit, and maybe you'll be like, well, let's see how it goes next week. Let's not do that. Let's just show up today at 5 o'clock, okay? Show up today and be in a blessing to Mike and Mary. They'll be here. They'll be ready to go. And you go ahead and come and be a blessing. And, and you know what? You'll find great relationships and friendships when you serve the Lord. You get to meet new people. You get to sing out unto the Lord and give praise to Him. What, what, what's better than that? I'm not sure, except for the fact the Lord never gave me that ability. Amen. Uh, in fact, it's so low on the ability, Mike won't even let me in. You know what I'm saying? That's how that, you know, it's so low on the ability. Uh, but you know what? Let's go ahead and make a joyful noise to the Lord. Let's do that, okay? Let's do that. What a blessing. Well, we're going to be in the book of Philippians today, and we're going to be in uh, Matthew chapter 6 today. Uh, we're going to be in there, but I want to make mention of, uh, while you're kind of getting there, I want to make mention of some very important announcements and some of the things that are going on in the life and ministry here, life and ministry here at Canyon Springs. Once again, choir practice tonight, 5 o'clock, be here. That would be wonderful. Uh, next Sunday night, after the evening service, we will be having our annual financial meeting. If you did not get a chance, uh, it, I think many of you have already received it. Uh, I personally handed out so many of these. Uh, but if you need one of these, uh, they are going to be right up here for you at the end of the service. Come and grab one of those packets. Now, hey, if you've already grabbed one and it's in the, it's in the trunk of your car, you don't need another one. You just go to the trunk of the car and open it up and there you go. That's right where it will be. So, but if you do need one or maybe you're the kind of guy that loses stuff like I am, right? If it was in the trunk of the car but my dog ate it, or something like that, see me, we'll get you a copy. We want to make sure that you have that. Uh, if you're part of our church family, you, you need to have one of these. If you are a giving part of our church family, you are faithfully giving, we want you to know. You might be a winter visitor. You might be, uh, you give online. You might do that. Listen, we want to be accountable for all of those gifts. And so you come on up, grab one of these, keep it confidential between you and the Lord, of course. But we want to give an account of what your gifts have, where they go, and all sorts of things like that. And so that's up here available for you. I'll probably say more at the end of service about that. Uh, but we want to make mention of some of those things. And uh, let's continue to be faithful in some areas of giving. You can give on the way in or on the way out. Many forms or many opportunities different ways to give. And some of you, many of you, if, excuse me, uh, have already taken opportunity to avail yourselves of those opportunities of different ways to give. Some uh, give online uh, through their uh, online bill pay. And uh, your bank, through your bill pay, sends the church the, your offering. Many of you do that, and that comes and gets to the proper place. Uh, some of you do online through Zelly, and uh, some of you do PayPal through uh, Canyon Springs Giving at gmail.com and Zelly is Canyon Springs Giving at gmail.com and many of you do that faithfully. I want to thank you for all of that. We have our friends and our family from all over the country, and I want to say thank you for sending gifts our way. The Lord has provided for us throughout this past year. We've had uh, several large gifts uh, come in the mail. Uh, and we're very thankful for that. We're able to operate. And we're able to continue. We're able to grow and, and able to expand. And so the Lord has blessed Canyon Springs uh, mightily. And we give Him praise and Him glory for all of that. I surely do. And, uh, you know, one of the things that our heartbeat is and our passion is, is uh, we want to be about our Father's business. Amen. And uh, COVID has been real difficult in that endeavor. Uh, it's been uh, a learning experience. By way of saying that, I mean, we haven't got it figured out yet. We're still in the process. <laughs> We're still in the process of every day striving to be about our Father's business. But one thing that we did decide to do is, you know, and we always have done this all of the years that I have been here, is we strive that whenever possible, we like to do improvements on our church, our building, we want folks to drive by. We want them to know that we love Jesus. 
We, we want them to know that we care about God's house. We want them to know that, you know what, uh, this is a place to where people can come and worship and uh, learn from the Bible and know more about Jesus. And so we're striving to do that. And in that endeavor, we've, we, we've taken on a little bit of a project uh, over COVID. We working on the parking lot in the rear here. Many of you know where that's at. And, and uh, in years past, uh, we've had to have uh, parking all over around in the, in the dirt and all sorts of things in the back here. And uh, so we said, well, let's work on that while we can. Uh, while there's nothing else really going on, let's go out here and do that. And so we've been working hard at that. Brother Panky's been uh, on the tractor many hours. He, lo- he logged many hours. So his tractor is used now. It's a used tractor now, and uh, he spent many long hours and time and all of that uh, doing that. Well, we want to, we've, we've been thinking about, okay, what's the next step? What do we want to do? Uh, we were able to get the sidewalks in, of course, and then, you know, um, we're like, well, let's get, let's see what the price is. Let's see what we would need to come up with uh, to get it paved. Uh, we've been working for uh, since COVID happened to try to get our parking lot fixed, a couple holes fixed, resealed. And we've been working like all year long and we've been working at trying to get that organized and scheduled. And it's been a long process, but um, it just seems like, you know, if you're faithful and you're just patient, somehow God kinds of lets you know why you kind of struggled in the beginning to get this thing happening and all these kinds of things done. And just recently we've had uh, a gift come in for the parking lot. And so, Lord willing, uh, you know what? It, I, I've learned that it never, uh, y- you know, you can't count the chickens till they hatch. You ever heard that one, right? And I can't promise they'll be here this week, but I hope they will because we, we said we're going to do it. Uh, but uh, so this week, you're going to notice uh, some new asphalt, some, uh, some construction going on in the back here. And, and I just wanted to make you aware of that. So maybe on Wednesday, um, scheduled to be all completed, all done, but uh, if it isn't, uh, we might have to just kind of park up by the, uh, the north parking lot here, the north driveway. You'll be able to tell uh, on Wednesday when you get here, but we're very thankful for God providing yeah. that. You know, these little things that take so much effort, so much time of saving and those things, God just has been showing me that um, He does own the cattle on a thousand hills. And uh, he provides for his church, and he provides for his people, and on a personal level, he provides for me. And I want, just want to encourage you, you, you give your life to the Lord, you honor him in, with your finances, and you're going to be beginning to find out that, you know what, that is a secret to success, uh, is by being giving and honoring God with all that you have. And I want to say uh, thank you for those that have been giving. I want to say thank you for those gifts that have come online this past year. And in the next week, I believe next week, uh, you're going to be able to uh, get your giving receipt. Uh, what that is, is, is all year long, if you've given to Canyon Springs Baptist Church in an offering envelope with your name on it, uh, we have a record of your gift. And uh, there'll be a piece of paper, and it'll tell you exactly how much you've given, when you've given, and because we want to be accountable to you. And for some, it helps you uh, on your taxes and some of those types of things for charitable giving. And you'll be able to get that next week, Lord willing, in case the, all the printers don't, you know, break. Uh, you know, I'm learning to say, Lord willing. I'm learning that because it's... I'm just learning that. And uh, so that will happen next week and so that you can look over those types of things and, and uh, let us know about those things, okay? And uh, let's see what else we got going on. Maybe that's going to be happening this week. Uh, tonight, uh, tonight um, we are going to be, uh, going to be, of course, diving into God's Word again. And I'm going to be starting a, a message series on uh, for the birds. It's called For the Birds. It's for the birds. And uh, we're going to be starting that tonight. I'll mention it a little bit in the message this morning about that also. Uh, but that's going to be happening tonight at 6 o'clock. Also, um, we'll be having more information about 
uh, the trip to Israel that we are endeavoring to be a part of, endeavoring and planning it on, and all those types of things. We'll let you know more about that in the next week or two. Uh, you know, and the reason why that is is because it just seems like everything in America and everything in our country is kind of fluid at this time, and uh, different countries are different, and so we want to double check, and so uh, I'm going to be talking to some individuals and, and getting more information about maybe deposit times and so on and so forth, and we'll be getting more, some clarity on that. Uh, and so we just want to just kind of go forward as God leads us in that way, but I want to keep you informed. And I want you to have all the information. One of the things that I would ask that you even start now preparing to get your passport. If you're interested in going to Israel, they take quite a long time. And so you want to start preparing even now to get your passport if that is something that you are interested in doing. And of course, we understand with our climate, uh, we understand with our world that um, nothing can be taken for granted and schedules uh, need to be flexible and so we want to be mindful of that also but we are going to continue to press forward and continue to plan and continue to see what God is going to do so I want to make mention of those things and I want to encourage you this morning with God's word let's go to Philippians chapter number three and then we're going to be in the book of Matthew chapter six for the remainder of the time. I want to show you this. If you go with me to Philippians chapter number 3, Paul, in verse 13, and I want you to think about our this new year, and I we've called it new beginnings. We've called it a year of new. We've called it... Uh, if you will, uh, new opportunities, new goals, new visions, new hopes. Um, and I want to just kind of talk to you this morning about pressing forward. Pressing forward. Um, I don't know about you. Uh, sometimes we're very reactive to the things that are happening around us, and I really think we should be proactive at times. Yes, we should just press forward. The past is in the past, and of course, Paul had a past, and Paul had a future, one that he understood, and one that he knew, and one that his eyes were set upon. He says in verse 13, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. He says, I, I haven't arrived, <laughs> but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth under those things which are before it. Notice that reaching forth. Verse 14, he says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God. Notice, in Christ Jesus. I want to encourage you, would you with me? Would you with Canyon Springs Baptist? Would you just allow the Spirit of the Lord to work in your heart today? Would the scriptural principle here that we're going to look at, the pressing forward, would you just allow that to affect your life? No, 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 Pastor. You say, uh, no, I, I really like living here. I really like living in the past. In fact, that's my jam. <laughs> that's how I go about my business. That's how I look at the new world. That's how I look at every day through the lens of my past. Every day I think about the future through the lens of the past. And guess what has gotten me? Nothing but heartache, nothing but bitterness, nothing but pain, nothing but, uh, if you will, uh, this negative attitude that for some reason all my friends are not up on. I mean, if they're my friends... Well, they should just naturally love my negative attitude. They should just naturally, you know, be okay with me walking around like I had a lemon for breakfast. No, no, no. You've got it all wrong. I've worked with a lot of different kinds of people in my ministry. There was a few years where I've worked very closely with some folks that were 
down and out, real, real homeless at times, drug addicts, some folks that really had no wisdom about, no, their mom and dad never taught them any wisdom. Or, 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 they never learned any wisdom. I don't know. And uh, one of the things that uh, I came to the realization was about that, uh, and is there's just some people you can't help. And we've kind of had a sermon series regarding that. But I also recognize that there are some people that, that when they really understand how they need to forget those things which are behind and when they press forward, it is a beautiful thing. Yes, sir. It is an amazing thing. It, is so, it gets me so excited about because guess what? I understand what the scripture teaches about me and my position before Christ that I was dead in trespasses and in sins, and that without, with anything good that I could do was just filthy rags. And so I know my life in Christ is just better than I deserve. Amen. And so guess what? Uh, it's a beautiful thing to recognize God's grace, His forgiveness, His mercy in our life. It's just a beautiful thing. And so no matter where we've at, listen, our job is to press forward. And the people, as I talked about just a minute ago, the ones that understand how important it is to press forward, the only thing in front of them is success. Pressing forward. What's going on in your life that you just need to press forward towards that prize, towards the high calling of God? I know there's all sorts of unknowns, all sorts of anxieties, all sorts of different types of worries, and all sorts of uncertainties. Guess what? Guess what? The Lord knows all about them. He really does. He knows about them better than we know about them. You say, preacher, I'm living it. No, no, no. The Lord knows you intimately, and often what we miss is the lessons that God wants to teach us in the middle of our uncertainty. Let's take advantage. I joked with you just a little bit a couple weeks ago how, you know, during the quarantine, I, I took advantage of the quarantine. I didn't, I, I mean, I cleaned my yard, <laughs> I went through some things. I got rid of some stuff. I took advantage of it. I didn't want to spoil the quarantine with all negative. I wanted something to be positive, right? And look with me, if you will. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 6. And, and uh, as we think about pressing forward, as we think about moving on, as we think about uh, passing over, if you will, here... Uh, Jesus begins teaching about prayer. In the beginning parts of chapter 6, it's about prayer and giving of alms and giving. Verse 5, he says, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. And so God is trying to teach them how to pray and how not to pray, if you will. Sometimes that's a valuable lesson. Many times I have learned in my life much more by what not to do than maybe what someone says to do. I'm following somebody. They fall off the cliff. They go in the get ditch. I'm like, I ain't going that way. <laughs> they failed. They stumbled. They injured. They fell in a snare. They were pierced through with many sorrows because of useful lust or whatever it might be. And guess what? Hopefully, we learn a little bit. We don't go down that way. But we're human beings, aren't we? And we like our drama, don't we? We like our emotions to be in the right place. And we, we like being grouchy sometimes. We, we like ripping people's faces off because it makes me feel better for a moment. 
We like some of these things that uncertainty and worry and, and anxiety bring to us. But my friend, believer, church, listen, we've got to press forward. We've got to leave that in the past. And Jesus, as he was teaching about prayer, he says, but when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. So he's beginning to teach about prayer, and, and I should teach about how we should put our phones on silent. <laughs> Donna up here is saying, praise the Lord, it ain't me. <laughs> I embarrassed Steve one time. He's never happened again, has it, Steve? Right. Amen. And he forgave me for embarrassing him, but yeah, he did learn a lesson, right? Amen. And hopefully some of you saw him fall down that creek, amen, and said, I don't want to do that because pastor will call me out. I've had it happen to me one time. My good friend, Pastor Lamb, called me while I'm in the pulpit. My phone, normally, I'm like, no, oh, you know, and it was, I didn't silence it, and he called me. I'm like, oh, you turkey. You did this to me, you know. You knew I was preaching, you know. Come on, man, you know. But we need to be learning how to press forward. As Jesus was preaching about this prayer, if you look with me at verse 9, I want you to notice there's a little pattern here about prayer. And I think it's important that we kind of look at it for just a second because we're going to move on quickly after that. But notice Jesus says, After this manner, therefore pray ye. Here's the pattern. I want to teach you how to pray. Here it is. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. How many of you uh, grew up around a table where you said that every time, right? Went over to the grand my grandmothers and we would say that every time. And uh, so I do remember that from that time. And a lot of people recite the Lord's Prayer and they do it and they do it. And it gets a little repetitious, a little repetitious, a little repetitious. But I think it would be important to read verse 7. Look at verse 7. But when ye pray, use not vain what? Huh. Is that in the Bible? Yeah. And so we need to understand what the Bible says. It's a pattern. It says, after this manner, pray ye. After the manner that I'm praying, that's how you do it, but not the same. Now, you could, say, you could say those words in your heart and mean it, and that's a blessing of a prayer, amen? I'm not against that. That's the only prayer you know. Oh, pray that prayer, amen. But we ought to grow, and we ought to understand it's a pattern that God can use. And so when we press forward, let's press forward in prayer. Let's have an opportunity where we say, listen, I, I want to do a little better job praying. Had opportunity to you know, read about some men and women that have been doing some amazing things in their life, and their life is an example. And so, got to read about a gentleman, and we got to read about these different people in their life, and how they began to do some great things for God, and, and how God sh sh molded them and shaped them. And uh, it's interesting to see what God can do. And their lives were amazing. And I was reading about one. He, he started orphanages in, in England. He took all the street orphans and everybody like that. He took them and he prayed every day for their guidance. Every day for their supply of need. They didn't solicit donations. They just came knocking on the door. I can't remember his name right now, but I... Thank you, thank you, thank you. And that's a great story. And he was a man of prayer. George was a man of prayer. And everyone knew it. And God understood that he went to God in prayer and expected God to do some things. And God did. All over the world, orphans from everywhere, or all over the world, 
he impacted because of the prayers that he had. And so we see here that the prayer here, in verse number 9, of course, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hey, it says when we pray, we need to recognize that we're talking to God. He's holy. When we pray, he's holy. This ain't flippant. This is why we don't say the, oh my. That's why we don't automatically say, oh my. Why? Because God is holy. God's name should be revered. And so we ought to be careful. But when we pray, we ought to understand that he's holy, that he's revered, that, that you know what? He's in heaven. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. When we pray, we ought to be praying like, guess what, God? I'm okay with your will being done here. Yes, sir. I'm okay, even though I don't understand what's going on around me. I'm okay because you're in heaven and you're God and you're holy and righteous and you're good. Amen. That's how we ought to pray. Amen. Verse number 11, give us this day our daily bread. We ought to say, God, I'm depending upon you. If you will, let me say this. Lord, I need you. It's okay to say, pray that. Lord, I need you here. I need a victory. I need an answer. I need some guidance. I need a direction. Lord, I just need a feeling. Lord, I'm hurting, I'm depressed, I'm discouraged. Lord, I don't know what's going over me. I feel like the cloud is around me. But God, I want to see your sunshine through the clouds. God, I want to see the warmth of your light come into my heart and warm up my heart even though the world around me is so dark. Lord, I need you. Hey, let's press on. Let's, let, let's press forward in our prayer life. Let's use this pattern. Say, God, I need you. And he says that forgiving us our debts, oh boy, aren't we in need of forgiveness? Maybe we ought to say thank you, Lord, for forgiving me. You say, well, I haven't done anything bad. That's the problem. You don't realize you needed it. You don't realize you need it today. He says, as we forget, forgive our what? Debtors. So forgiveness is in there. Lord, I, I need to forgive that person. Lord, I just need to let it go. I need to, I, I, I need to, I can't focus on them. They're affecting my life in such a way. Lord, I'm giving them to you. I'm going to cast my burden upon you, and I'm going to give them to you. And he says, and lead us not. So you're saying, God, give me the direction. Lead me not into temptation. And then he says, but deliver us. He's praying for deliverance, and he's praying for other people to be delivered. This is a good thing. You ought to pray for those things. He says, why? Because guess what, God? You're in charge. For thine is the kingdom, God. You've got the power to do it, and the glory forever. Amen. I know that we don't always understand what comes tomorrow, but we can rest assured that God has plant power that's going to make it through tomorrow yes, and forever. Amen. So if God had a plan for creation, and he has a plan for eternity, why are we so fretful in the past, and why aren't we so more faithful in the, in the present, and why are we struggling to press forward in our area of our prayer, in forgiving, in our forgiveness, we need to be forgiving others. Yes, sir. Hey, we're, we're, we're not, we are not that great that we can hold on to all sorts of offenses. It's been proven. Bitterness, unforgiveness, anxiety, all of these kinds of things that go on in life, guess what it does? It affects us emotionally, affects us spiritually, affects us relationally. Amen. Every relationship we have can be affected by it. The Bible says in Hebrews that that root of bitterness springs up, defiles you, and defiles others also. You say, well, I really, really love my family. Well, if you really, really, really love your family, you take care of that bitterness. Amen. Well, you don't understand. No, I do understand. If you love your family... You are not wanting your family, the ones that you love, to be defiled, would you? 
So maybe it's time for you to let that roll, let it go. Pressing forward in forgiveness, in realness. In verse number 16 and verse 17, Jesus is teaching about prayer, the model there. Then he says, moreover, when you fast, okay, when when you go about your spiritual life, he says, not as the hypocrites. And then verse 18, he says, or excuse me, verse 17, but thou, when thou fastest, anointed thy head and washed thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast. But unto the Father, which is in secret, and thy Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. And so, you know what we need to be pressing forward this year in? Realness. Realness. Not the hypocrite. Not the one that just does it because other people are watching. Not the fakes. Not the ones that put on a good show, not the ones that say the right words, but let us be real. And let us, when we you know, go about our business, let's make sure we're pressing forward and we're doing it in a spirit of realness. Just be honest with other people, and by all means, please be honest with yourself. If you're constantly having conversations, and as you talk, you're using the pronoun I, A lot? Beware. If you're constantly having conversations with the people that you love and you're constantly taking over the conversation and you're not letting anybody else speak, but you're dominating and your voice is quite heard quite well, then then maybe you've got a problem. we got to make sure that we are real and we're not just out there doing something because we are conditioned to do it. Let's go out there and be real. We need to move forward, press forward in these areas. Uh, And and if you look here, verse 19, Jesus gives us some, some positive and negatives earlier, sure. But here he says, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. That would be a negative, I don't want you to lay up stuff on earth. And then look at verse 20. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. So you see the, the admonition not and the encouragement to, right? And, and, and this is what we need to make sure that we're doing in our life. As we're pressing forward, don't let lay aside treasures here. Lay aside the treasures there. gives us a new purpose, gives us something that we can go forward to. Amen. You say, I don't know what direction to go. Would you just go laying up treasures in heaven? That's a good direction. The scripture tells us how to do that. Being a light unto the world, a witness unto him, giving unto him, praising him. I mean, those are the directions that we ought to be doing. And, and I think it's important to press forward. I think it's important for us to grow spiritually. I think it's important to press forward in this area of our purpose. What is your purpose? The reason why we flounder. The reason why we get slowed down. The reason why we have no traction. The reason why we don't get anywhere is because maybe we are without purpose. Pastor, you got all the answers for me? What am I supposed to do with my life? Where am I supposed to go? No, I don't have all the answers, but I know God's Word does and God's Spirit does. And so as you follow God, as you begin to obey God, as you press forward, leave the past in the past, and you go forward, and you're going to say, wait a minute, I can't continue to lay up treasures on earth here because they just corrupt, they just go bad. But what I'm going to do is begin to set my affections on things above, not on below. And I am going to look unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of my faith. And I'm going to look unto him because, to be honest with you, as my human eyes look at this world, I have no clue. So as I'm looking at this world, I can't tell you what's going on. Amen? 
Now, you might have all the answers, maybe. Or you think you might have all the answers. We've learned a lot about that lately, haven't we? We need to make sure that we press forward in our purpose of life. And then also, look at verse 22 with me. He says, the light of the body is the eye. Um, basically, he's saying, you know the real you? The only way we can really, you know, the only way the real you comes out, I mean, it's through the eye, you know? That's like the window to the soul. You've heard that, right? He says, if therefore thine eye be single... The whole body shall be full of light. Here's the, the negative. But if thine eye be evil, the whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? And so here's a thought for you as we think about pressing forward. Hey, why don't we do it in singleness of heart and singleness of mind? Hey, we got so many things in our eyeballs, so many distractions going on. But why can't we just be single in our eye and say, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to set my affections on things above. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to lay up treasures in heaven. We get distracted. I've been known, people have said, I have adult attention deficit disorder. I've been known. And I'm like, that's right. It is what it is. Sometimes I, we have a hard time focusing on different things. But when we're thinking about the Lord, let's not let the things that are in our peripheral gain our attention when we're focusing upon the Lord. Let's do that in the area of our singleness of our mind and our eyes. And then how about pressing forward in our service? Look at verse 24. No man can serve two masters, he will either hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now, this is the problem that many have tried and many have failed. In fact, all have failed. You know why all have failed trying to serve God and mammon? You know why? Because God's Word says you can't do it. And here we are, just kicking against the pricks, aren't we? Oh, you know what? It's going to work this time. It didn't work a hundred times before, but it's going to work this time. We need to come make sure that our service, the things that we do for God, these kinds of things, are we're, we're pressing forward because we can't serve God and we can't serve others. We have to have a balance and we have to be single in our heart and our mind and we have to make sure that we're just pressing forward. We're leaving the old and going in a new direction. You say, well, I've been living for Christ for a long time. Praise God for you. You're the, one of the reasons why we have churches. You're one of the reasons why we have comfortable seats to sit on and parking lots to park in. But just as you've done in the past, you cannot rest in that. You have to make sure that we are pressing forward in our service. You say, but preacher, I'm old. I just had a birthday or whatever. And you say, preacher, you know what? Uh, I can't understand. Do you think God knows your limitations? Do you think God knows your limitations? Do you think God knows your age? Do you think God knows what you can and cannot do? I think he does. And, and, and maybe you just ought to ask God, God, would you tell me uh, what, I, what you want me to do? It might be different. Ooh, Change? It might be a different avenue, a different direction than what you've done in the past. That's okay. Yes, sir. But you just have to recognize that you've got to press forward in your service. You can't just say, well, you know what? They don't have a kid's class now, so you know what? Uh, right now, I can't do anything. No, 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 no. Press forward in your service. We can't just be in the past. We've got to say, hey, what opportunities avail me right now? Because I can't serve God and I can't serve man or mammon there, the world's philosophy here. And so we're getting there. Now, I want you to notice something here. If you go down with me 
in verse 25, notice this word. <coughs> Excuse me. In verse 25, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. Now, in the Bible where it, when that word therefore is there, it's, it's an important word. Very important word. Because when it says therefore... Uh, the writer here is telling us that because of what we just learned, because of what we just heard, because of the truths that were just explained to us previously, this is your response. See, life is about cause and reaction. Life is about, hey, this is what I told you, now this is what you do. This is a push and pulling. And so here he says, listen, can I tell you something? Because I told you that you got to press forward, because I told you you got to make sure that you're laying up in heaven. you got to make sure that you have a singleness in your mind. you got to make sure that you're not out there striving to serve man or mammon, if you will. You've got to make sure that because all of these things I've told you, then he says, therefore... Because I just told you this, listen, listen, you know what he says? Take no thought for your life. That's hard to do. Some of you right now are hungry. And it is consuming you. Some of you are thinking about your grocery list. Some of you are thinking about what kind of shoes that person is wearing. Some of you are thinking about, who is this crazy guy talking to us up here? (laughs) But we have to press forward. We have to come to the place to where we understand, i got to leave the past in the past. And he says, therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, if you will. No worries. Because we always worry about everything. That's an American thing. Other cultures, uh, if you watch them, they're not worried. They're not stressing out. They're not having nervous breakdowns in the bush. They're saying, well, let's go get a pig. (laughs) They're hunting. Now, they got other problems. I'm not saying that. But it ain't anxiety. It ain't worry. It ain't these kinds of things. But, but Jesus says, hey, I, I, I don't want you to take thought for your life. I, I don't want you to worry about anything because guess what? If you're a child of God, you belong to me. Notice he says in verse 25, he says, what, Take no thought for your life what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for the body what ye shall put on. So he says, I don't want you to worry about what you're going to eat or what you're going to drink or what kind of raiment you're going to put on your body. And and, and so notice this statement here in verse 25, and I think it's important. Let's pay attention here now. He says, is not the life, what life? The one that you're not supposed to think about, not supposed to worry about. Is the life, is not the life more than meat? and the body than raiment. And so you know what he's saying? He's saying that guess what? This big thing we call life is not all about you. This big thing of life is more than what you got to eat in your belly. It's more than what you put on your clothes. He says... It's not about what you put inside your body. It's not about what you put on the outside of your body. You catch that? Take no thought for your life. No worries. Why are you worried about what you're going to eat, what you're going to put on? I think today in our day, we are consumed 
with everything to do with our body and what we're putting in it. We're putting in it through the eye gate, ear gate. We're, we're putting drugs and alcohol. And we're thinking about it a lot. Information. Truth, untruth, whatever it might be. I mean, we're putting a lot of things in there. And he, and he says, is not life... More than just what you're putting in it? More than just what you're putting on it? Is that not li what life's all about? I, I want to challenge you just on a very elementary type of a challenge. Hey, why don't you write down what you put on the inside? Why don't you write down what you put on the outside? And just really evaluate it. Because here we are wondering what the real meaning of life is. And isn't it interesting that when people are hurting, when people are wondering, when they're questioning about what God's plan is for all time, isn't it interesting that a lot of people begin to be nervous and anxious and worried? And what do they do? They fill in their body with all sorts of things. I need more information. I need more drink. I need more drug. I need more this. I need more that. And so we're constantly putting things in. And Jesus says, don't worry about your life. What you're going to put in, what you're going to put on your body. And then he says in verse 26, gives us some help here. He says, behold. We had a word earlier, therefore. Now there's a good word called behold. Behold. So God's saying, listen, I just got done telling you something, and because of that, your response should be that you are not consumed with your life. Because life is way more than what you eat and what you put on. It's way more than what you're putting in, whether it may be information or whatever it might be. Guess what? It's way more important than that. We've got life is more than that. Then he says, behold, now, that word behold is, is a great word. It means pay attention. Hey, look at me. Listen, listen, listen. Focus now. Focus on what I'm saying. Are you understanding the words that are coming out of my mouth? You know, all that's right. That's what behold means. Behold. Are you paying attention? I want to show you what life is all about. And it's not about what you eat. It's not about what you put on. What does he say? He says right here, behold, the fowls of the air. So he wants you to pay attention to the fowls. He wants you to look at the fowls. He wants you to, to pay attention, to focus, to, to think about that. It's interesting, and I've, been, I've started to study about birds in the Bible because I'm, I'm bringing this message tonight, and, and this is part kind of part of it, if you will. And birds are interesting creatures. Um, when I started thinking about birds, I started to kind of it came because you know God got me up really early in the morning some days, not because I wanted to; it just happened. Didn't want to get up that early, but when you get out, you want to, I notice that the birds are there ready to go. They're singing their songs. They're flying around without a care in the world. They're happy. I mean, I look, they're happy. They look happy to me. I've never seen a depressed bird in my life. I never have. <laughs> I mean, they're just happy. And the Bible says, behold, the fowls of the air of clean. i got to understand. What am I supposed to learn? I'm looking at the fowls. I'm, look, I'm looking at the birds. What are they doing? They're pecking. They're, you know, they're having fun. I don't think anyone has any emotional issues. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm looking at them. I'm beholding them. I'm, I'm trying to pay a little attention to them. It's interesting in the Bible, and, and we'll, we'll dive into it tonight a little bit, but there's like 
300 different verses that talk about birds and fowls and different kinds of birds. And used for different reasons. There's unclean birds and there's clean birds. And there's all sorts of different kinds of things. And, and he says right here, I want you to look at it. Because why? Why did, why did the Lord say, pay attention to the bird? Why, why did he say that? He says right here. He says in verse 26, For they sow not, neither do they reap. Huh? What's that supposed to mean to me? They sow not, and they, neither do they reap. You see, here we are worried about what we're going to put in our body and what we're going to put on our body. We're spending a lot of time stressing about that. God says, don't think about that. you got to press on. You can't stop and just focus upon what you're putting in and what you're putting on. And he says, pay attention. Behold, listen. You see the bird? Okay, I see the bird, Lord. I see the bird. Well, they don't sow. They don't reap. Well, that's what we do. We sow a garden. We reap a garden. We eat a garden. I mean, we're at it. That's what we do. That's what human mankind does. That's how we take care of ourselves. That's how we provide for what we put in and what we put on. And he says, pay attention to the bird. They don't sow. They don't reap. Notice, they don't gather into barns. How concerned are we about the roof over our heads? Are you worried about that? He says, I don't want you to take thought for it. I don't want you to worry about that. And there's a reason why the Lord could say that. I don't know about you. The, the, I've had some times where I've been worried this past year. Uncomfortable, unknown, uh, you know, just wondering. But I'm, I'm not to worry. I look at the birds. God takes care of them. They're not concerned. They're living every single day. They're pressing forward. They're doing it. Now look. Now look. He says in verse number 27, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit? So there's a clarification here. He's saying there's just some things in life that you can't control. There's just some things you can't control. And then look at verse Number 28, and why take ye thought for raiment? It's okay. Why are, you, why are you thinking about your life? Hey, look at the birds. Why are you, take, think, why are you thinking about raiment? What, you're, what, what are you going to put on your body? Why? And there's another good word. It's called consider. It's a good word. You know what consider means is a careful examination, almost like, you're walking by and you see some beautiful flowers or some lilies or whatever it might be and, and you're considering them. And if you were to consider them, what you would do is you would walk by and, and say there was a, a bouquet of lilies on my pulpit there. I would walk by and I would not do this. I would be like, oh, those are nice. That's really great. Okay, well, you know, and then to keep on going. But if I was to consider the lilies that were on my pulpit, figuratively, I would go, I'm going to consider the lilies. Oh, I see the lilies. And let me stop. Let me think about these lilies for a second. Let me focus on them. Let me sit by the word consider means. Carefully examine, ponder, study, meditate. So, so I'm, I'm to focus on the birds, and I am to, if you will, meditate and study and ponder and examine the lily. What am I supposed to see? Why am I supposed to consider that? Look at Jesus says, have you considered how they grow? Have you ever seen wildflowers? Nobody waters them. We have, we have flowers all over the mountain. You say, well, we haven't had flowers because of the drought. Guess what? When it rains, we'll have them. He said, how do you know? I know. Just needs a little drop of water. Whenever God chooses to bring that water, 
their seed is already in themselves, right? Now, have you considered the lilies of the field, how they grow? They're there. They're, they're not toiling. They're not stressed. They're not anxious. Neither do they spend. Neither do. Hey, they're not moved. We get so moved. Is it Jesus our rock? Aren't we supposed to be standing on the rock? Oh, someone says something. We move. When I was a kid, one of, the, one of our fun activities was to play King of the Mountain. I loved it. I love pushing people down. Amen. But more than that, I love to win. So we play King of the Mountain. And so what would happen sometimes is you really want to win, you go up there and you push off the bully. Well, that was me, but you know, you push off the bully. <laughs> and you push him off and you end up going off too. But then some turkey that doesn't even know what he's doing, he's the king of the mountain. What's going on? You see, here we are. We need to consider all of that and say, man, they're not moved. The lily grows. He's not concerned. He's not being moved. He stands right where he's at. And sometimes what we'll do is we'll get off our spot. We'll get off the rock, if you will, and somebody else comes, and we're out of position. And so we just need to look at the lilies. They're not being moved. Nobody tells them to grow. They just grow. God takes care of them. And this is the example that the Lord wants us to understand. Look at verse number 30. Wherefore, that's God's term. It says, there, wherefore, God does this, and then he says, therefore, this is what you need to do. So wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, he's talking about the frailty of life, the, the limit of life, uh, the limit of things, uh, the, the, how that things pass away. Haven't you seen that? Uh, if, you, if you've uh, uh, had any opportunity uh, to uh, watch any news at any time during the past year, we have a multiplicity of topics. One day it'll be this, next day it'll be that, next day it'll be this, next day it'll be that. And we'll have something different every day. And, and, and what we need to recognize is, he says, there is a lot of things that are happening today that we can't be hindered on. We have to press forward, if you will. We've got to press on to this year. We've got to go forward. We've got to say, guess what? I can't, there are some things that I can't control. I can't make myself taller. Some people try. They, they wear these shoes with these, these uh, heel deals. Guys are even wearing them now. They want to get taller. But guess what? I got to consider, wait a minute. I can't actually make myself taller. And so why am I worried? Why, why don't I just consider those lilies out in the field? Guess what? They grow. Whether, whether, I, whether I'm worried about them or not, they just grow. They're not moved. Why do we get moved so much? Let me tell you something, Christian. There's some things that you need to stand on, and that's the Word of God. There's some things that you need not to be moved on. That is your personal relationship with Jesus. There's some things that you need to be standing strong on and not moved on in a world that is constantly changing. Your salvation, your experience, the truth that God has given us in His Word. It doesn't matter what anyone else says. Let God be true and all men be called a liar. God is the source of all truth. Let us stand on the rock of Jesus. Amen. Let us understand that when we consider these lilies, they don't work. They're just there. And God takes care of them. Yeah, life is limited. Uh, the grass grows and then it's gone. We get that. 
But look, he says in verse 30, shall he not much more clothe you? So he said, I want you to meditate on the lilies. You see how they're clothed? Yeah, they might not make it all year long, but you see how they're clothed and they're arrayed like better than Solomon, if you will? And he says, you know what? If you think God takes care of that, how much more would he take care of you? You see, we got to come to the place where we begin to recognize we have a big God. And our God knows this next week. And our God knows our days. And God knows everything that's going to happen. And I'm just going to consider, hmm, i got to have my faith in Him. And so in verse 30, the first word was wherefore. That's God's part. He says, I'm going to clothe you. And, and guess what? Don't you believe that I'm going to take care of you? Verse 31, therefore. That's my part. Look at verse 31. Therefore, take no thought, saying, what we shall eat, or what we shall drink, or with all shall we be clothed. He says, I don't want you to take a thought about it. I, I don't want you to worry. Don't worry. Uh, have a spirit of contentment. That's the idea of where you are just, you might want more. You, you might desire more than what you have now, but you understand that wherever you are at night right now, God has placed you there, and you need to be content with such things as you have. Amen. But, but I, want, I want more. Well, just ask God for that, but you have to be content. And so the spirit of contentment is being taught here. He says, wherefore, be content. Because as the birds are taken care of, so will you. Somebody said to me, I haven't missed a meal. I'm pretty, I'm pretty good. Perspective. And then he says, therefore, in verse 31, and then verse 32, there's a difference here. It's, it's interesting. Verse 32, Jesus says, for after all these things, notice that phrase, these things. What is he talking about? The things that were mentioned earlier, the need for clothing, the need for shelter, the need for food, the need for more, the need for more. He says all of those things. He says, look, for after these things do the Gentiles seek. Now Jesus is speaking to the Jewish audience here. But the Gentiles were those people that were alienated from the commonwealth of Israel. They really had no hope, the Bible says, right? And they were out doing what seems fit to them. All sorts of wickedness. I mean, you know what? People left to themselves begin to worship all sorts of crazy things. Beetles and snakes and all that. And sun and moon and stars and, and all of that. And pretty soon, it goes down that path. And he says, but guess what? The Gentiles, they're seeking out what do you put in your body. And they're seeking out what you put on your body. This is why we desire to be holy rather than worldly. Because the Gentiles, picture the world here. The Gentiles, all they are seeking is what they can put in their body and what they can put on their body. You worried about those things? That's what they're seeking. But you're a believer. There's a difference, if you will. Did you notice the difference? These unsaved, these uh, non-believers, if you will, these people that are fleshly hearted, they have a mind of the flesh, they're seeking all sorts of meat for the belly and clothes for the back and things in their life. But guess what? They want to put things inside and they want to put things on the outside. And remember what Jesus said in verse 16 of this passage about the hypocrites? I mean, listen, these folks are hypocrites. They're seeking all of these things. And he says, don't be like them. Somebody's phone. Hey, man, we're popular today. Someone on Facebook is watching saying, oh, let's see what I can do. I know they're in church. 
Who else is in church that didn't do that? So they're making all these calls. I could just see it, you know. Now, notice the difference here. The difference is clear. Uh, and he says, don't be like the hypocrites. And so for you and I, guess what? Our message is very clear. We are not to be like the world, right? And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, right? So we need to be a little different. And so guess what? While the world is falling apart, where the, while the unspiritual are getting to a place to where, you know what, they're going crazy and they un don't understand what's happening and they're not trusting in God. And you know what, they just, uh, they're, 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 they're out of their mind, so to speak. Guess what? You don't need to be there. You don't need to worry. Take no thought for this life. Why? Well, you've already figured out. Wait a minute. I need to pray. I need to be thankful. I need to make sure that I'm laying up treasures in heaven rather than things here because what's here is what? Sinking sand. What's here is not a very good foundation to build. But if I want to build something, I want to build on the Lord Jesus Christ because he's my rock. Let's press forward. Verse 33 tells us how Jesus says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. There's my priority. Let's press forward. Let's seek first the Lord. First things first. Oh, do we get sidetracked? Do we get off mark? Do we do things in the wrong order? You ever put something together? And you got bolts afterwards? What are these for? First things first. Let's seek the Lord. Notice what verse 33 teaches us. Verse 33 teaches us that if we seek God, because remember, we're not worried about this life, right? What could go on the inside and what could go on the outside. We're not worried about that one bit. What we're doing is we're just saying, I'm seeking the Lord. And guess what you can do? Every man, woman, and child can seek the Lord. There's no special. You say, well, how do I do it? Well, look at the bird. Look at the lily. They're not worried. They're not stressed. God takes care of them. Why don't you think he'd create you? Have faith. Have faith that, guess what? God is in control. You say, but preacher, I need a little bit. I need a little clothes on my back. Preacher, I need a little food in my belly. Notice what God said in verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Notice, notice, pay attention here, and all these things shall be added unto you. You don't have to worry about it. You let God give it to you. You need food for your belly? Don't worry about it. See God first, and guess what? You can have it. You have enough. And I'm sure we're, we have a congregation this morning that could 100% testify that you've been taken care of, that you've been provided for. You've had what you needed going on the inside, right? And you had what you needed on the clothing. The Bible says, and having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. Look at verse 34. Jesus says, Take therefore no thought for the morrow. We got a couple morrows here this week, don't we? We got tomorrow and the next day and the next day. And I guess it's something really big. We'll find out, won't we? It'd probably be just like the day before. And the day before. But we don't know. We don't know. But he says right here, take therefore no thought. He says, I don't want you to worry about what you put in and what you, what you put on. I don't want you to do that. I want you to look at the bird. I want you to consider the lilies. And then I want you to have faith. And guess what? If you just seek the Lord, what's going to happen is all those things that you thought you might have wanted to be worry about, you don't need to worry about them because you're going to ha have them because God's going to add them to you. And then, then what do you do? You just press forward. Well, what about tomorrow? Isn't that always the way it goes? Hey, 
you work, you plan, you do this, and then, and then somebody says, but what about the next day? Well, I haven't got to the next day. I'm not even there yet, right? right. And you know what God says? I don't want you to even worry or think about tomorrow either. I just want you to press forward today. And that's a good reminder for us. Let's live a good life today. Amen. Amen. What about tomorrow? I don't know. What about tomorrow? Well, I know what he says right here. Don't worry about tomorrow. Why? Well, the answer is right there in verse 34. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Guess what he says? Tomorrow can think for itself. <laughs> he says tomorrow, it, it can handle itself. You can barely handle today. Why don't you just take thought and right now seek ye first the kingdom of God. Amen. I'm reminded, and I'm going to finish here, the last phrase there in verse 34, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So guess what? Tomorrow... Don't be naive to think tomorrow will be filled without any evil. Because evil, there's sufficient amount of evil to go around. And let's not be surprised when evil wins a few rounds. Let's get back up there and get fighting. Yeah, I know you might be feeling you're out for the count. Seven, eight. No, nah, but listen, we can get up. We can get up, get back in the ring, get back in at the fight. But don't be worried about tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to take care of itself. Why don't you worry about today? What's the answer for us? Look at the bird. Look at the lily. Consider. And then just simply, you know what? I'm done with all this worry. I'm just going to seek first the kingdom of God, and I'm going to let everything else go and give it to the Lord. That's what we need to do today. Amen. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Amen. Today, I need to do what God says. I need to press forward today. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for your kindness, and we thank you for this word. Lord, uh, I'm humbled to just to be here sharing these thoughts. And I just ask, Lord, that as a church family, we get it. We begin to build our faith and we begin to just seek you. Lord, we got all sorts of stuff going on in our life. We got a lot of sort of thoughts and worries, but Lord, would we listen to the Bible today? We just look at the bird, look at the lily. Would we just recognize that the world is the one going out there and worried about everything? Why, why are we worried too when we have a Lord, when we have you, Lord, to do this? Why? Lord, help us to let tomorrow be tomorrow and let today be the day of the Lord. I'm wondering if there would be one here that would say, you know, preacher, to be honest with you, I've been living my life a hypocrite. I may know a few things about a few things, but to be honest with you, preacher... There's never been a time in my life where I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. I know about church. I know about what Jesus did on the cross, but I've, there's never been a time when I've trusted Jesus as my Savior. And I want to seek ye first. I don't want to be like those hypocrites. I want to be a seeker first. I don't know, is there anyone here that would say preacher? Maybe even online, say preacher. Pray for me. I, I, I want to be, be a believer. I want to trust Jesus today. Anyone like that? Say, you know what? I don't think I'm a believer. I, I, need to, I need to make sure of that. Anyone like that? Maybe you're online and you just recognize you're not saved. Let me invite you, the first thing you need to do is not worry about what you got on, not worry about what's in your belly. You need to worry about seeking first the kingdom of God. And Jesus Christ died on the cross. He was buried and rose again. Why? So that all mankind could experience his love. 
And I want to invite you to trust Jesus as your Savior today. The Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's time to be saved if you're not. Believer, maybe you're here and you know Jesus, but you're just going to be honest with the Lord today and say, you know, I've been taking thought for this life. I've been in the wrong place. Instead of beholding and considering, I've been worried. I've been worried. I've been here. I've been consumed with all sorts of things, and I just want to seek first the Lord and let Him deal with today and tomorrow. How many say, preacher, you know, the Lord spoke to me about something in my life, and I want to attest to that, and I want to tell the Lord, I heard Him, and I'm going to change. Anybody like that, say, that's me. God bless you, and you, and you, and you, and you, all over, amen. If you're online today, let me encourage you, make a decision for Christ in that area. Maybe you're here and something the Lord has spoken to you about. This is the great time during this invitation just to do business with the Lord. Say, God, I'm going to seek you. I'm not going to worry about what's going on the end and going to go on the body because I'm going to let you deal with that and supply that. I'm going to have faith in that. I want to pray for you and we're going to have an invitation. This invitation is time for you This during this time of prayerful introspection. Take it to the Lord. Speak to the Lord one-on-one. -on -one. You have a relationship with the Lord. It's time for you to speak to the Lord and do business. Lord, bless this invitation, this time where we can come to you, make these really, really important decisions because you've talked to us from your word. Now it is our time to consider, our time to behold, and our time to seek you. We pray this in your name. Amen. Let's stand together in a spirit of prayer. Mike's going to sing, and as Mike sings, we have an altar. We have an altar here for you. Right there at your seat, whatever it may be. Take some time with the Lord. Make that decision. Keepers of King.